the gateway to the West, Cardinal Nation. St. Louis, Missouri is home to some of the most brilliant physicians in the world. These doctors are pushing science to its limits, healing patients in new, innovative ways, and doing it at the same time they're teaching the next generation of doctors how to save lives. Meet Dr. Steve Pickus, specialist in hematology and oncology, and Dr. Medhat Osman, a specialist in nuclear medicine, who is leading a clinical trial using radioactive isotopes to target and eradicate cancer cells in prostate cancer patients. This is the science of healing. Nuclear medicine is part of radiology, but it's very unique because in radiology, you have a machine produced radiation that goes through the patient. These are the pictures that we'll look at if you ever had a chest X-ray or a CAT scan. But in nuclear medicine, our source of radiation is actually from within the patient. So we inject the patient with a small amount of radioactivity, and then we capture the images when these gamma rays come out from the patient. That gives us information about the function of some of the organs in the body and then also for chasing cancer, where the cancer is. The big advancement for us in nuclear medicine is the ability to treat and target tumors, not just, not just diagnose the patient had something wrong, but being able to use that technology to get medication and treatment to that specific area, maybe where the tumor is. It is the concept of a magic bullet that if I can see it, then I can treat it and the treatment will target only the cancer cells with minimal exposure to the rest of the, the normal organs in the body. I was invited to give a lecture in 2014 at the World Federation in Nuclear Medicine, and there was a big session about theranostics, and I was just blown away listening to this and how finally we're gonna be a major player in uh, not just in the diagnosis of cancer, but also in treating cancer. The two key player at that time in that meeting was a colleague from Germany and a colleague from Australia. And I spoke to both of them and I said, I, I, I'll do anything to come to your center and learn more about this field. And they were both kind enough that they gave me a verbal approval of me visiting their center. I'm tenured and part of the academia slew is the ability to go for a sabbatical. And the idea is to go learn about something new and bring this back. I end up by going to Australia, in Melbourne. And it was, uh, that's where I spent time at Peter McCollum Cancer Center, which is one of the largest cancer centers in the world. And they were just doing cutting edge theranostic approach to many cancers. So I learn as much as I can, and I work with the colleagues there, get ready to uh, offer that, because I knew that it's a matter of time where it's gonna be FDA approved. And we immediately had everything in place to start treating patients as soon as we have the FDA approval. Uh, so we did indeed offer this treatment. At the same time, we knew that there is a lot of clinical trials going on in the prostate cancer. Uh, and in getting ready for that as well, we actively participated in the vision trial. And that was a milestone of a trial in prostate cancer that led to also major publication in New England Journal of Medicine and also to the approval uh, that we're waiting for it to happen any day now. So my colleague, Dr. Osmond in nuclear medicine has been able to get us involved with a clinical trial, which was using a unique approach of actually a targeted antibody that binds to the prostate cancer cell and it drags along with it radioactive isotope. So we did know that radiation treats prostate cancer, but the problem with radiation is that it's basically killing everything in the, you know, where you're giving the radiation and not very selective. When we give this targeted therapy, what happens is that the radioactive isotope, which in this case was uh, lutetium-177, uh, it's attached to the protein, which is called PSMA. This basically would then target the prostate cancer and then the radiation would be given locally right to the tumor cell taking the right patient, giving the right treatment at the right time with the right dose. So we do, it is what is called personalization. I had a, a growth in the upper part of my chest right here at the bottom of the neck. And once they saw it, they said, it's a glandular cancer, most likely prostate. 
long way from here to here. But that seemed to be the habit that they've been seeing. And so I was diagnosed so that I had it in my lymph, my lungs, and my bones. Prostate cancer, the prognosis is really based on the speed at which the tumor is growing. His prostate cancer was growing rapidly, meaning that it was doubling very quickly. When a tumor grows rapidly, obviously, uh, you're talking about a fairly limited amount of time, and it could very well have been six months to a year he could have, have passed away from this disease. And I thought, wow. And of course, I didn't realize the moment you have it presenting itself here at the bottom of the neck that you actually have a metastasized cancer. That's a pretty good indication of what's going on. He had already failed a number of things, including hormone therapies that stopped working, chemotherapy. He had had um, another treatment that was, you know, we basically tried all the options and I was kind of running out of things to do. They were able to get me on this particular clinical trial. So our ability to diagnose prostate cancer, wherever it is, and treat it wherever it is, is much, much better. And that translates into having better quality of life and live, helping patients live longer. He was able to enroll in this trial. He, as you can tell by talking to him, he had a tremendous response. And from what I understand, there were an, about four other people who submitted to the clinical trial. I believe my numbers came out pretty close to the top. His treatment was remarkable in that we monitor something called the PSA, which is a protein that is produced by prostate cells, including prostate cancer. And his PSA just plummeted once he started treatment. What was really surprising is how fast his uh, symptoms started getting better. Basically over the first two months, this lymphedema that he had just melted away. His symptoms went away, his pain went away, his swelling went away. Uh, he was able to ambulate well again. He basically returned back to somebody you would look at and say, it doesn't look like this man is sick. And he is doing well. He is, as last I talked to him, his PSA was still extremely low. They won't say the word remission as much as you have just cornered this to the point that it's practically non-existent. So the side effects are less and it is more effective treatment that help the patient live longer and have less symptoms from the widespread cancer that they have. Feels great. So, so when it, how it makes me feel when somebody responds like that obviously is great. I'd love to be able to see patients doing well. It's, it's totally healed now, nine years later. But I'm a member of a survivor's club I didn't really want to have to be a part of, but I am. So I guess I'll just pick that up and carry it. Expecting that patients would respond to treatment. I did not know how fast or you know how well, I guess you should say, the treatments would go. And dramatic responses, basically going to essentially almost undetectable amounts of, of cancer. The clinical trial for Vision PSMA was a game changer. Nuclear medicine has been around for the area that is uh, we use small amount of radioactivity to give us information to diagnose a disease, but then we can use a larger amount of activity to treat that disease. Um, and that's kind of the mixing of diagnostics and therapeutics. That's the world, uh, the new world that we're in now, which is theranostics, because it's, it's a term used to uh, reflect the mixing, mixing of diagnostics and therapeutics. This one, was selected as the image of the year of 2018, so that's three years ago. Basically, what's on the left here, these are all the prostate cancer cases. All the red dots are cancer, and this is their PSA level at baseline. Then they treated them with lutetium, PSMA, similar to our patients here in the clinical trial. And then this is their PSMA images after the lutetium, and this is their PSA. So some of them have extensive disease, and they were able to attain complete response to therapy. Some of them, extensive disease, and they had significant response to therapy, and few had complete response to therapy like this one here. Um, so right now we have the imaging capability with the new recently approved FDA, and we are, it's pending giving the lutetium treatment, but then you can use that to assess the response to therapy. So you can image where the cancer is, you can treat where the cancer is, 
and then you can assess the response to see how successful you are. That's in a nutshell, the concept in Paranostic is that you see where the cancer, you treat where the cancer, and then you can assess how successful your, your treatment was. Theranostics is a really exciting field and it's really exploding. So the whole concept of Theranostic is taking the right patient, giving the right treatment at the right time with the right dose. When Dr. Osmond returned from Australia, the scans that he has shown us of individual patients are miraculous. This is just the beginning. This is an exploding field now and industry is quantifying this as being uh, would exceed $30 billion by 2030. And I think it's gonna be even more because not just prostate cancer, this is now being tried in other types of cancers and breast cancer and in renal cell cancer and in brain cancers. I remember I was in Australia and they show us, here's the case and here are the images and showing a widespread disease. And I knew we're gonna see the patient. I'm expecting the patient to be coming in a wheelchair and uh, be complaining about all the pain and the symptoms from widespread disease. Patient is walking and joking with the physicians and he's telling them, you caused the problem because I actually uh, uh, made a list of my bucket list and spend all the money that I have because I didn't think I'm gonna live, but now you are you're helping me live longer and I have to go back to work again. He had got a call, they told him to come in for some testing. Then when they test, they said that he had cancer. Well, um, Alonzo is an elderly gentleman who really is not a candidate for chemotherapy. So as opposed to the previous patient who did get chemotherapy, Mr. Brand could not get it based on his other comorbidities. So because of that, he really had very limited options. Hormone therapy was no longer working and his disease was progressing. Really, I wasn't expecting him to make it through the year. Mr. Alonzo was sent to me by Dr. Pincus, our colleague in medical oncology, and he said, I think you have a, a, a patient that would, can fit in the clinical trial. And we uh, interviewed the patient. He is a, a, a man of few words, but we understood based on reviewing his record and his images, that also uh, he has a widespread disease. He is not able to do much because of the, the, how spread his disease. It was beautiful. To me, he was because it's bringing me back around. So he wound up doing it, and we've been going through weeks and weeks and weeks, and I, saw him, I see him just get better and better and better and better. It's kind of like I saw him go from to, and they say it's because of that, so I'm forever grateful. And I always meet with him when he's coming back to take uh, another dose uh, of the treatment. How are you feeling? And he has this, uh, again, just a smile and he's a beautiful. Like when you put medicine in your body, medicine go everywhere. But they just straight put it directly to it. That's what they was telling us and it helped. And the response, the, actually the response was better than they thought it was gonna be. And he's still on therapy right now. He's not finished with treatment. So far, he has been tolerating it really well, amazingly well, and he's feeling well. Because of this clinical trial, is set up in such a way that I'm supposed to be blinded in terms of results. I do not know what his PSA is doing, but if I'm clinically, he, he's definitely improving. Um, his anemia is resolving. His symptoms are better. He feels better. You know, there is this, the, the, the um, symptoms related to cancer have resolved. You know, instead of saying, I'm cool, or well, everybody got to, I'm fine, I'm fine. This is how you know to just, I'm fine, I'm fine. So what we're doing today, hey, you coming to get me? At first he's like, oh, go ahead, I'll go. Then I'm going to the store for him like yesterday. I usually, he usually would go ahead and grab this. He got out the truck yesterday, and we actually walked through the store. And I'm saying, this, it's such a, man, I don't want to break down the tears on the camera, but I think God gave him this quality of life back that he, he needed. It's really amazing to me. Uh, I may think that I'm having a bad day, but when you see a patient like this, and you know the extent of the disease, and you see their positive attitude. It makes you appreciate what you have, and it makes you grateful that they are willing to help not just themselves, but help others, because it's these clinical trials that provide data that helps change guidelines. If it wasn't for those patients helping, the guidelines would not change. So they are opening the door to doing this for a thousand more patient generations to come. It saved my life, right. I believe it did. I can't think of a better feeling that, that you can have impact on someone's life, but to take away cancer. Cancer is still a word that 
scared anyone. And so, so the idea that someone can say to them, without a knife, without surgery, without any of this, your cancer is gone when everything else failed in treating them, I can't think of anything that would be more rewarding. When we're trying to find these cancer cells, it's like looking for a needle in a haystack. That's how small and, and how difficult these cancer cells are, are to find. This radio pharmaceutical highlights the, the needle and puts a bright light on it so you see it immediately. I think that our physicians at St. Louis University are really utilizing research to forward advanced medicine. And so that's exciting for us to be a part of that. And as an academic medical center, we're excited to be leading those efforts. I feel so blessed and, and proud of our team and what we are able to accomplish at our hospital. Uh, we moved to the new hospital. We were given the best facilities that anyone can ask for. I was deeply involved in the blueprint of the hospital and any and everything that we asked for was given to us. Dr. Osman met with me and talked about really the future of what he wanted, what his vision was for nuclear medicine. And so that's uh, what we started on that path five years ago when we decided that we were building a new facility here. And so that was, he was very integral in the planning as well as the team uh, to really talk about what kind of technologies we needed to be able to manage the types of patients that come here for services. So we sat down with the, with the uh, administration at the hospital and we, I told them, this is my wish list. We want to change all the bathroom. Uh, we want to uh, change all the facility to make sure that uh, it will be a radiation safety conscious facility, not only for the safety of the patient, but the safety of all the team who are handling this high doses of radioactivity. We are the only facility that I know of who has the capability of being an inpatient that received as high of a dose as a thousand millicurie because the hospital were listened to our advice and followed our advice and recommendation by having enough shielding to deliver such a high dose. And this is very unique. There are, I'm not aware of any facility in the country right now who can claim that. And I think what it really means for the future is that we will continue to really lead and be innovative in our approaches to really uh, what's happening in medicine, what, what's current and what we can offer our patients that is really cutting edge um, as far as nuclear imaging and, and all the other things that we do here at the hospital. I joined the VA back in, in January of 2009. Fortunate to be where I am because at both St. Louis University and in St. Louis VA, I have a wonderful team at each of these facilities and wonderful group of patients that there's no shortage of prostate cancer on each of those facilities, but then also in other types of cancers. But for now, we have, we're actively involved in multiple clinical trials at both St. Louis University and St. Louis VA, who so are able to offer that to the VA patients and also to the to the uh, our patient at St. Louis University Hospital. I remember the VA patient, the first VA patient that we treated on this vision trial. He came to us and he was in a wheelchair. That they literally had to carry him to help him go to the bathroom and then bring him back to put him on the wheelchair. And after we started the treatment, the patient pulled his cell phone and he said, Dr. Asma, I want to show you something. And he was showing me a red Corvette that he bought and he's driving now. And I just could not be happier. He had good quality of life and he was able to do stuff that he was not able to do before. This is a VA patient, his name is Mr. Anthony, and I was asked to evaluate his file and see whether he would be a good candidate, also sent to us by a colleague from medical oncology. And he, on paper, he fits the diagnosis and he fits the eligibility criteria. However, we need to do a screening scan, PSMA, and we did the screening scan and I had the uncomfortable position of having to tell him. Uh, and unfortunately, I knew that in his mind, he had four lesions. 
and I knew from the scan that he has at least 10. So I, so the good news is that we can enroll you in the trial based on the finding that we have from the scan because all your cancers, you have more lesions than what you knew you had. However, all of these lesions are showing expression of these receptors that we're gonna target by therapy. So don't uh, be discouraged by the number of lesions. I explained to him, he had a lot of questions about what's the world of theranostics, what does that mean, and all of that. And then he basically looked me in the eye and said, okay, I trust you. Radiation is nothing to play with because you know, like when it was, when it was first, Displayed, you know, it was used for destruction. So, so but now it's still destruction, but it's specific and isolated. And he's responding, but you feel the weight when you feel you are the last hope for something like that. So I pray that he would be one of the responders as well. So far, we're in the right direction but you don't know till you finish the full course and see the, the response to treatment. Some patients would respond better than others. If his scan follows the same course that, that we have seen in the example patients that Dr. Uh, Osmond brought back from Australia, he, he has a great chance for much improvement. I said, I know you're a scientist. The God I serve sent you to help me. But you know what he said to me? He said that, but he also sent you to help us. So I said, you know, so I laughed, you know, I thought that I was something I didn't expect that. They, prostate cancer is one of the most frequent cancers in men. And it's, it's very exciting to have this new technology available to them. And I must say that the St. Louis VA is the only VA enrolled in this clinical trial. So our veterans who have volunteered to participate in this clinical trial are opening the doors for near miraculous therapy to other veterans throughout the U.S. I told my daughter and my granddaughter, I said, I'm going to be on Channel 4. It's just, just kind of halfway joking, but I was serious. You know, and so I want them uh, to know that my life is about you know, doing things that can affect them. You know, my grandchildren stuff that, who would have thought of this right here? I'm, this is all relatively new to me, but I'm happy that I'm a part of it. I'll say it like that. So. I'm very optimistic that going forward, this is going to be exploding as a field and gonna take that model from prostate cancer, giving it earlier and earlier. And the model that's successful in prostate cancer is going to be also successful in breast cancer, in lung cancer, in other cancers that currently we were not playing a role in, in the management of these cancers. I think that uh, we've had people already start calling, trying to see if they can get into a study. So already, People are starting to hear about this through their medical oncologists. I think that our physicians at St. Louis University are really utilizing research to forward advanced medicine. So Dr. Osmond, he has a great scientific mind. Uh, he's very passionate about what he does, and he's a nice person as well. So it's, it's a great collaboration. Uh, Dr. Pinks is a professor of oncology and saw what I saw, which is that this is really the wave of the future. He's a chemotherapy guy but he knew that this is gonna be adding an option for him in treating his patients. And as soon as the publications came out in the vision trial, he was the first one actually to call me and say, oh, I saw your name. You, this is actually great that it is now published in New England Journal of Medicine, and we're looking forward to enrolling patients. Dr. Osmond has been true to his dream. It has really been rewarding to work with him and see the progress that he has made. So we're really excited to go to the randomization phase when we're gonna enroll the next 390 patients. If someone is watching and they have prostate cancer, then they need to reach out to us and we can evaluate their case and see whether which clinical trial would be best uh, trial for them to be enrolled in. I do enjoy working for Salute Care and I really think the mission of, of informed medicine and um, precision medicine, it goes 
right along with our studies. So the idea is that if, or the hope, that if you start giving it earlier and earlier, you may reach to a point where that's all you need to give if you identify the right patient and give them the right treatment at the right time with the right therapeutic dose, then that may be the road to uh, cure or as close as it gets to cure. But we are getting better and better at treating cancers. The survival of prostate cancer, metastatic prostate cancer is definitely improving, which is you know the most common cancer in men. So you know, treating prostate cancer is a big chunk of cancer in this country. It's a whole different feeling when you feel, I can now have a positive impact in, in someone's life and in someone's family and in someone's family member. For, for me, it's really a privilege to work with our physicians here who are so dedicated to eradicating cancer. So I hope that in the future, in our lifetime, we can see that happen. Um, it's, a, it's a really um, great thing to strive for and you know, I, hope to, I hope to see that. When I was in Australia in neuroendocrine tumor, in, we saw, I saw some cases where the patient had cancer 25 years ago and they're coming for the follow-up and they're completely cured. To them, it's something in, in the back of their mind as something that happened in the past, but they're still being monitored. But the cancer didn't come back for 20, 30 years. I've been in medicine for 50 years. <laughs> we have been trying to cure cancer all of this, all of this time. And reason to believe that this will make a major impact in prostate cancer. And the technique that is used for this therapy can be modified for future treatments for other types of cancer. I think for anyone to have cancer, having a family member who had cancer, you just don't forget that. And when my father had lung cancer, um, I wish if he had had that chance I remember the, the surgeon at that time telling me that was new and he said, I said, what about PET scanning? I said, well, not unless you have money to waste. So it, it, to think now that I'm reading PET scans and having that impact, not just in the diagnosis, but also in the treatment and thinking that one day there will be someone like my dad getting this treatment and being cured. I, I look forward to the time where I can tell someone that your cancer is gone.